Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing really well and having a really great day. In this video, I want to talk about Ethereum Classic yet again. And there has been, I believe, some headway here. So the ETC Cooperative is supporting the switch to the new SHA-3 or Ketchak-256 algorithm, uh, which you all know is FPGA and ASIC friendly and not very, very efficient on GPUs, okay? Uh, so you guys know mainly the reasonings why Ethereum Classic is moving to a new algorithm. Uh, the biggest one is because of the 51% attack uh, that happened in 2019. I believe it happened twice, uh, but don't quote me on that. But Alex Sankov, he is the developer who has been working on the shop three implementation, all that stuff. Okay. And, um, there is a test net. If you guys want to try out Cha three or catch act 256, um, it's called astor.host. There's, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of, uh, information regarding, uh, how to mine it. Uh, why are they moving into it? Um, how do I build an FPGA ASIC for Ketchak 256? So a lot of information here that they eventually want to have multiple companies, you know, like not just only Bitmain, you know, as Bitmain is the biggest one, but they want Inosilicon or Obelisk or, uh, you know, all the other Bikel miners, you know, all the, all the other ASIC manufacturers on board in order to really have a competitive nature uh, to this uh, SHA-3 uh, algorithm. Okay, so th they're basically wanting to implement SHA-3 due to the same imperative as uh, the same, uh, sorry, not imperative, the same, the same agenda as like Bitcoin you know, with the SHA-256 miners. Okay, and you know, there's millions upon billions of dollars invested into SHA-256 and there's tons and tons of different miners and ASIC miners out there and different uh, warehouses, huge centralized warehouses all over the world. Uh, whether or not that's decentralized, in your guys' opinion, th let me know. Okay, so that's that's something that we can talk about another time. But they announced here, basically, they are going to be working with Henry Kwan of Epic Blockchain Technologies. Uh, he is apparently a uh, ASIC manufacturer. He's been designing ASICs for about 30 plus years. Um, so he's the CEO of this company, Epic Blockchain. And uh, yeah, so he basically uh, has an article here. Actually, I'm going to show you guys right now. Uh, Navigating the mining options for the Ethereum Classic SHA-3 fork. Okay, so this was released on February 10th. And uh, I believe it was the same time that this was announced. Okay, so uh, I wonder if there's any collusion or any colluding going on with the ASIC manufacturer and the implementation for SHA-3 here. But uh, that's just something I'm thinking of. Uh, it's probably not true. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's keep going here. So I'm going to read a little snippet here, okay? So SHA-3 is hardware agnostic. So I believe that just means open to all the hardware. Uh, network hash rate and moreover, network security relies heavily not not only on miners, but loyal and dedicated miners who truly support the network. Changing to ECIP-1049, which I believe is the... The SHA-3 implementation, yes, the change to Ketchak-256, okay, uh, will lead to an increased hash rate and more diverse mining hardware, included dedicated hardware for ETC in the form of ASICs. This will make ETC network, si network significantly more resilient to GPU attacks. Now, what they mean by GPU attacks, I kind of find that funny. And the, the reason why they got attacked is because the Ethereum network hash rate uh, Ethereum Classic hash rate is not very high, okay? So that's another argument that Ethereum Classic, I believe the devs and Bob Summerwill organizers, they talked about that, you know, there's, there's, you know, compared to Ethereum, the Ethereum network hash rate right now is about 164 terahash, right? Compared to Ethereum Classic, it's only about 13 or 14, 11 to 12 to 14 terahash currently. And, you know, that's about, I would say, uh, uh, 10 to 1 uh, ratio 11 to 1 ratio of uh, network hash rate right there's uh, comparing to to ethereum there's about 187 187,000 different miners on the network or uh, ethereum 
addresses versus the 24,500 different Ethereum addresses that are being mined to right now. So that's not saying to, that's not to say, you know, a single address can have hundreds of GPUs. Okay. So that's just disclaimer. Um, okay. So continuing here, while the change is significantly, sig while the change significantly improves network security, there were concerns from the community that dedicated ASIC hardware would not be ready for block 11.5 uh, million hard fork to the SHA-3 proof of work. These concerns are unfounded since SHA-3 is hardware agnostic and will run on today's GPUs and FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays until SHA-3 ASICs come online. Okay, so. I don't know of any SHA-3 ASICs, but that's not to say Epic Blockchain, which is AKA Henry Kwan, the CEO of Epic Blockchain that was just released this article a couple days ago, February 10th, and uh, the announcement uh, from ETC Cooperative, okay, from noticing Henry Kwan here, okay? And they, yeah, they want to implement this and apparently White Block Genesis, I believe it's a, uh, it's like another company. They're going to try to implement Catch Act 256 into the Hyperledger, uh, Besu client, public testnet, uh, create the documentation, yada, 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 all that, all that great stuff, all the features and updates, efficiencies uh, for the, for Ethereum Classic. Okay. And, um, yeah, basically the Astor testnet, this is the one Astor.host here you guys can read uh, if you guys want to read on more information about it. I don't think they said it would be set in stone here, okay? But I, I do want to read uh, one last thing here, okay? So, becoming the apex predator with an ASIC-friendly ASIC -friendly SHA-3 based mining ecosystem is a massively more secure position than our current minority hash ETH hash position, okay? So I explained the hash rate disparity between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. You guys saw that, okay? So pretty big difference, as we all know. Um, so resulting to very, easel, very easily to be 51% attacked. So say nice hash, you know, you can rent you can rent nice hash or mining pool hub or wherever you can rent the hash rate and uh, point it at Ethereum Classic per se. Okay, uh, obviously that hasn't happened since. I don't know if that's ever going to happen again. Okay, but that's what they're worried about. Okay, uh, continuing as it stand as it standards, the ETC security is heavily dependent on whether or not ProgPow is activated and when and how Ethereum transitions to POS. The chain is still vulnerable to 51% attacks, okay, which I just mentioned. Uh, it is the position of ETC Cooperative that we are best served by transi transitioning the ETC chain to Catch Act 256. So we are investing some resources into exploring that proposal and to de-risking the proposal through implementation. We'll work with miners, mining pools, and with the authors to, and maintainers of both open source and closed source mining software. Uh, we will work with wallets and exchanges and other node operators to flesh out all the operational aspects of Ketchak 256 chain and of the potential transition. Ultimately, whether that such transitional occurs on, on not is down to the human consensus, which can be built behind the proposal. The best way to get such consensus is through implementation in clients, implementation in supporting the software, operation of the testnet under load, and similar concrete steps. That is what we are doing today, doing starting today. So this is from Bob Summerwell, Executive Director of the ETC Cooperative. Okay, so with that said, I actually, I wanted to show you guys one little video snippet here from Henry Kwan at the ETC Summit of 2019. So I'm just going to play this little snippet here. Having a product that doesn't work, a small company can't do that. Now, fundamentally, uh, you know, when Alex talks about a SHA-3, we like SHA-3 because we think it creates a level playing field. Uh, fundamentally, it's very digital, so there isn't a lot of change that happens. Uh, there isn't a lot of differences between the vendors. You and I had that conversation last night where we said there isn't going to be a lot of difference between a 28 nanometer product and a 16 nanometer product. The fundamental scalability of that performance level is the same as the difference in ASIC technology. So, you know, when you look at a business overall... You Okay, so that's just a little bit of snippet I wanted to talk about there. So he's talking about leveling the playing field. So this is kind of a term that, uh, as we all know, ProgPow is supposed to level the playing field amongst all hardware, okay? GPU, ASIC, FPGA, and whatnot, okay? But um, Henry Kwan was mentioning mainly just ASIC leveling playing field, ASIC chips. Uh, he's mentioning nanometer, all that kind of stuff. So 
interesting. Well, uh, maybe that could be pertained to GPU dies as well, nanometer. I'm not sure, but it's interesting that he said that, and I kind of question, you know, <laughs> uh, that little bit there. Uh, let me know what you guys think, okay? So, out that out of the way, I, I just want to mention that um, Epic Blockchain Technologies uh, has also worked with Grin, the Epic Grin 1 ASIC, which I believe was cancelled. Obelisk was cancelled. InnoSilicon cancelled their Grin miners as well, okay? So Epic was working on a new architecture, Grin ASIC for the Kaka 232, uh, but the Grin 1 ASIC was cancelled due to Obelisk, so this was a while ago. Um, so I'm assuming this company was working with them as well, okay? So apparently, yeah. So whether or not this company or Henry Kwan is going to be making a SHA-3 ASIC, that will be interesting to see. And I will be, it'll be funny to see, you know, the network hash rate and uh, if they move to SHA-3 and, you know, see how much uh, network hash rate will come of it, right? And um whether or not there's going to be an ASIC already for Ethereum Classic, we will see. We will see. I'll be very excited to see that. <laughs> It'd be really funny, right? And then the, I guess the implementation, will all the pools, all the mining pools accept this SHA-3 implementation, okay? So they have to work with, they have to pretty much communicate with all these different pools all that are mining on Ethereum Classic currently um, if they are able to uh, get you know, get set in stone the SHA-3 implementation. Of course, it's all testing right now. They didn't say, they didn't, it's not set in stone that they're going to implement SHA-3, uh, but they are working towards it actively now, okay? So it sounds like, uh, yeah, it sounds like they're going to be actively working on it. Okay, so there are, uh, ending off, I have a few um, comments here from Bob Summerwell and uh, Sony Rollins. I believe this is from the uh, Discord channel on Ethereum Classic, which I'll link down below. I want you guys to go over there and voice your concerns, uh, whether or not uh, they should just stay Ethereum Classic, uh, ETHash, sorry, and uh, move to SHA-3, okay? So uh, there's been some lot of talk in there. Uh, so I just want to read this little bit from Sony Rollins. Uh, last Monday, uh, February 10th. To be honest, I'm pretty unimpressed by ETC miners. They have been completely absent every step of the way since at least 2018 when prices started going down against ETH. Not a single pool has shown up at the 2019 ETC Summit. One of the largest, two miners, is pushing ProgPow, which is run by a known scammer and, ex and extremely unsafe, <laughs> which is oh god a girl, which I, I, I just don't believe. Also, never a word about how they would help fund this space. Fund this space? What is are the pools or operators are supposed to fund etc uh now the meat and potatoes are th they they allowed the network to get 51 percent attacked and they still haven't done anything about the gas limit um cc uh, we're seeing over 20k okay yada yada, yada. okay so um <laughs> so this guy's unimpressed i believe he's one of the organizers on the etc discord and uh, yeah i don't know I, as a gpu miner myself the community has been strong I've always talked about Ethereum Classic in my, in my videos. Uh, during my giveaways, I've always given given away Ethereum Classic. Every single giveaway in the past year and a half of my YouTube channel career. I've been using Ethereum Classic. I've been mining Ethereum Classic constantly. I've marketed Ethereum Classic as, uh, as a great coin to mine. And my community loves Ethereum Classic. So I don't know where he got that from. Uh, maybe he just doesn't watch YouTube. Or uh, maybe dis, uh, Discord or anything, but I uh, a lot of my community love Ethereum Classic. Okay, we really mine it. Okay, and uh, Bob Summerwell here, he's got a comment here. Um, he's got why do ASICs matter? Because they are by definition tied to a specific hash algorithm and are not general purpose. That enforces loyalty because the sunk cost of investment in that hardware means you cannot defect to another chain that way GPU miners can. It changes incentives. So they want to keep the network security. They want to be uh, ASIC friendly. So people will be tied or be stuck into the ecosystem of Ethereum Classic SHA-3 algorithm. Okay, so interesting outlook, interesting perspective. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, one last quote here from Bob Summerwill that was from on February 10th on Discord. Uh, he says, to me, the largest unanswered questions about Ketchak 256 
or SHA-3 are really related to how the transition would be managed. In addition to the technical work we need to explore on the clients and mining software, modeling out and dry running transition is likely the chunk of work with most questions. So we explore and test and plan and try to get better information to inform decision making and maybe we do months of work and decide that sticking on ETHash is best. That is entirely possible. It is a hypothesis and some experiments. That is what test nets are for, which is the astor.host, astor which you guys can read here. Okay. That's all I want to talk about, my friends. Um, let me know what you think about Ethereum Classic and their push now, um, or, or the ATC Cooperative now, uh, supporting the Catch Act 256 proposal. So uh, whether or not that's going to be implemented this year, they're going to be doing a lot of testing. Uh, but uh, hey, I a lot of stuff going on and I will keep you all updated let me know what you think and all the information I portrayed to you guys in this video today Henry Kwan epic blockchains uh, is first time of uh, for me of, her of hearing him um, so whether or not uh, we're gonna get ASIC miners out the gate for SHA-3 coming up later on that'll be interesting um, and I guess my little opinion on obviously them moving away from GPU miners I, you know, it sucks. It sucks. I've, I've been into Ethereum Classic uh, for a long time and I've, I've used Ethereum Classic. I've, I've used it as giveaways and a lot of my community members love Ethereum Classic. And, um, you know, it, it sucks. It sucks that they want to move this way. As you guys can see, there's a little chart here uh, regarding the, uh, he says here, ASICs are coming. Okay, so ASICs are coming for SHA-3. And, uh, you know, you can see the efficiency disparity here between a GPU, FPGA, and uh, ASIC, he, he, he says. He, uh, these are just, uh, just theoretical numbers here, but he's saying it's a thousand X efficiency compared to, an FP, uh, compared to a GPU, and then uh, FPGA is about 30 X compared to a GPU, okay? Uh, so really, probably on the first day or second day, we'll see some GPUs on it. Uh, but then ultimately FPGAs and ASICs are going to take over uh, for SHA-3, most likely in my opinion. And um, now I guess I forgot to explain like maybe the policy. Mon I wonder what the mon monetary policy is going to be. Like, you know, with all these different ASIC manufacturers coming into play and uh, they want to be like Bitcoin, then maybe like Dash or Litecoin or with all the ASIC miners out in the market, which are, you know, somewhat somewhat consumer consumer available uh, to buy still a lot of shady a lot of scammers out there selling asic miners so that's another thing you know it's not just easy you just go to best buy and buy a graphic card which i totally i i wish i wish ethereum classic could work on a gpu mining algorithm keep it more decentralized in my opinion you know we in my opinion i don't think we're gonna see a lot of uh, ASIC mining pools compared to all the eth Ethereum Classic pool mining pools that we have now, we're definitely not going to see that kind of decentralization. You can see the hash network hash rate is really spread out. It's really spread out in my opinion. I mean, Ethermine has a lot of the network hash rate, and uh, yeah, all these other other pools here, um, top five. But it, it's it it looks it looks to be pretty decentralized in my opinion, uh, but. Of course, uh, they they they're talking about fifty one percent attacks, but can you know <laughs> what's not to say ASICs or FPGAs can do fifty one percent attacks as well, right? So that's that's another aspect um, straight out the gate that I'm gonna see. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens once the uh, algorithm gets implemented. Okay, my friends, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about Ethereum Classic. Looks like it went a little bit down today as I'm making this video. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sad regarding Ethereum Classic uh, right now moving to this. But um, I don't think maybe they don't care about the community, the small, the GPU community. So yeah, it'll be sad. Uh, and if they move to ASIC, I don't think they're going to have a they're not going to have much of a community per se. So, okay. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Peace out.